when you focus on the breath, it's important that you want to stay here. And you'll find that the committee of the mind has some members who are happy to be here and other members who are not. This is why the Buddha says there are two duties that you do as you get the mind to settle down with right mindfulness and into right concentration. One is to keep track of the object that you're determined to focus on, like the breath. And the other is to, as he says, put aside greed and distress with reference to the world. In other words, how to say no to any thoughts that would come by and pull you out. And it's in learning how to make yourself want to be with the breath and not want to be with those thoughts. That's how you exercise your discernment. Because with discernment, we can't wait until the very end of the path and say, now that my virtue is perfect, now that my concentration is perfect, I'll start thinking about discernment. It doesn't work that way. Everything you do in the path, even beginning with generosity, your ability to talk yourself into being generous, talk yourself out of holding on to things that you know that you can give away with good, with good results, that's the beginning of discernment. Because it's all about your actions. As the Buddha said, we suffer because of our actions. But we can also learn how to not suffer through our actions. So it's a matter of choosing which actions we want to follow, which ones are really in our interest, and which ones we want to put aside. And so you have to realize that the choosing is going to be an act of fabrication. Like you choose to stay with the breath. You've got the three kinds of fabrication right there. Bodily fabrication, which is the breath itself. Verbal fabrication, direct a thought and evaluation as you direct your thoughts to the breath and analyze the breath to make sure that it's comfortable. And when it's comfortable, how to maintain that sense of comfort. And then when you can maintain it, how to spread it. And then there's mental fabrication, the pictures you have in the mind, together with the feelings that you're trying to create here, a feeling of well-being. So picture the breath in the body in a way that helps you stay here, with a sense of the breath filling the whole body, your awareness filling the whole body, and every cell in the body being nourished. Now use those same three kinds of fabrication to analyze the distractions as well, because they too are fabrications that come in. And you're trying to figure out where is the appeal of those distractions. Now, in some case, a distraction comes in and it doesn't have much pull in the mind. You realize you've left the breath, and all you have to do is pull yourself back, and there you are. But with others, the mind wants to go back. It wants to look at that distraction again, follow it, see where it goes. So here again, you have to analyze things in terms of the three kinds of fabrication. What kind of breathing is there with that distraction? What are you telling yourself about that distraction that makes it appealing? And what images do you hold in mind that give it an appeal? And can you change those kinds of fabrication? So that you can see that the appeal is pretty pretty ephemeral, ephemerable. Pretty weak. And the drawbacks are much greater. And try to use whatever kind of image helps. I found in my own case that if it's thoughts that I go over again and again and again, till they become rotten. I say, well, you want to be like a dog that finds something rotten in the ground and just rolls in the rotten thing? Is that what you want to do? And holding that perception in mind helps it make that thought a lot less attractive. And to remind yourself of the attractions of wanting to stay with the breath. Here's the, here's the path out. The Buddha said it is possible to put an end to suffering. And even though some parts of his path don't seem all that appealing, all the teachings he has about passion and dispassion, still he wants you to be passionate about the path. So learn how to have good associations with the path, ways of picturing the practice to yourself that make it appealing, something you want to do. And that's why you're developing your discernment. You're learning how to do the things that are for your long-term good interest. 
and to abandon things that are for your long-term harm. Simply that as the practice develops, you're taking that principle and you're making it more and more refined. So every time you can talk yourself out of doing something unskillful and into doing something skillful, regard that as an exercise for your discernment. And it's that principle of focusing on your actions, trying to make them as skillful as you can, that will carry you through. <laughs>